these are the operating instructions for the 100,000 Newton Instron mechanical tester. It's located on the furnace side of the lab. This is how you should find the machine for the 202 lab with the grips installed, the machine is calibrated, and really ready for testing. The software control uh, should be on this screen, in which case you open the Blue Hill Universal software here. The one with the question mark is your help page. The one with the dog bones is the software for running the mechanical tester. So we're going to open that. And when I open that up, it's going to want a username and password. And those are written on the whiteboard behind the instrument, all cap. Okay, so this is our home screen. When you first uh, begin operating the Instron, you have to calibrate the load cell. You can access the calibration uh, software with this icon here in the upper right. You can see this is touch screen. And these are the different calibrations you can do, strain gauge, load cell, displacement. So we're going to calibrate the load cell. And this page pops up and uh, we make sure it's reading 100,000 newtons. We have the right load cell plugged in and hit calibrate. When you do that, it gives you a warning that you can't have a dog bone gripped into the grips or any force on the load cell during calibration. So if you do have a dog bone in the grips, loosen those grips back up uh, so there's no force on the load cell. And then hit OK and it's calibrating. And when it's finished, you zeroes the force and you can close this and close the calibration page. So we're back to the home screen. Now The displacement and force should be zero before you put your dog bone in. If not, you can now hit balance all down here and it'll zero these. You no longer need to calibrate the load cell, but you do need to zero the load cell before you put the dog bone in. First, we need to load our sample into the grips. So if the machine is on, you can open the door. You will be testing various dog bone samples, like this steel. So you want to first uh, label the samples and make the appropriate measurements of the dimensions you need for a mechanical test, the gauge length, the width, and the thickness of the material. The dog bone will be positioned between the grips like this and tighten down with these knobs. This tells you which way is tight and loose. So position that in the middle of the grips and tighten. And now you have to make sure the dog bone is straight up and down vertical. and jog the grip and tighten the top. Okay, I've got these in and I'm going to do one last snug tightening on this and then close the door.
Okay, now that I've put the dog bone in, you'll notice a little force on the load cell, one kilonewton, and that's fine. That force is on the dog bone from putting it in the grips. But I had to jog a little bit to get it in place, so we do want to zero this displacement. You can zero the displacement in the lower toolbar. we're ready to test. Notice the emergency stop button at any time you feel like the machine is going to crash or samples are going to collide or anything out of the ordinary. Just hit that. It's no big deal to recover from uh, emergency stop. We also have set these emergency stops so that if for any reason the two Instron grips were about to collide, this is going to stop the machine uh, automatically. Okay, to start a test, we are going to choose the test. This is the first page where it then wants you to choose a method to run. We already have a method created for the lab MSE202 still testing, so I'm going to choose that. And it'll open up the method. The first thing that comes up is where your uh, data is going to be stored on the desktop. In the MSE202 folder. And then you're going to give your file a name. Then it wants the length, the thickness, and width of the dog bone. So hopefully you've measured those before you put them in the machine. Any notes you want to put down. And the rate at which you want to run the test is set at 2 mils per minute. And this is an important variable for your test and should be recorded in the notebook. Okay, when everything on this page is as it should be with the proper dimensions, you can hit this arrow Here we have before the test a bunch of reminders make sure your specimen is properly installed Close the safety door wear your safety glasses enter your sample's parameters, zero the extension, so it's reminding you to do that if you haven't already, and then you're ready to start. So since we have zeroed the extension and we're ready to go, we can hit the start button here. And then you see the test is starting, the plot is auto-scaling as the grips are moving apart. Here you can read the extension and the load, and hopefully you can see this stress-strain curve, or actually it's force displacement curve, uh, what the force is on the load cell as the grips move apart. This tells us that the upper grip is moving up. rate is 2 mils per minute. It has our length and thickness in there. And we've gotten to 12 and a half kilonewtons and you see the curve is now flattening out and there should be elongation on the dog bone at this point. If you observe closely you can probably see that in the test region, the gauge length.
so that noise was the steel breaking and you can see once it breaks the method knew that because the force changed drastically and the machine stops okay so at this point you want to continue on in the method here it'll do calculations if you don't have any calculations you're ready to finish but at this point before finishing I like to take the dog bone out to make sure there isn't a return of the grips uh, that would then crash the elongated dog bone together so we need to get the dog bone out of the machine you can remove the dog bone by opening the door and then loosening these grips. The piece that should come out. And we have the broken pieces. Once I have the dog bone out, I'm going to finish. Okay, and once I finish, it's asking me where I want to send a report. So I want to give the report a name on the keyboard. And it's saving it. We can go to the desktop. Okay, so now it's asking me if I want to test another sample. If the answer is yes, I can hit yes and it'll go in to another test. The grips did not return, so I'm going to hit this return button. And when I hit that, this should go back to zero as they move back together. All right. Sometimes the machines do that automatically, so that's why you want to get the dog bone out before you hit finished and the uh, grips automatically return to zero and crash the dog bones together. Okay, so now I'm ready to test my second sample.